Hello again, everyone. Welcome to my reaction to chapter 118 of Seraph of the End. Oh, God. <laughs> Who's nervous? I'm nervous. I think I'm turning greyer with every chapter, and not just because, you know, this story takes an age to update and ages to, like, move forward. The happy ending is, uh, is growing dimmer on the horizon. I just, I can't even see the happy ending anymore in this story, which really worries me. Because it's the anniversary chapter, I've got myself a little bingo card just here with, uh, with predictions. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. We'll see which ones I get right, which ones I get horribly wrong. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. This chapter comes immediately off the back of Grun's birthday. I learned that from the fandom a couple of days ago. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> this is not a good sign. <laughs> because it's his birthday and Kagami's like, have all the gifts, Gurren. Have your world resurrection plan. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't get what he wants. Okay guys, you know the drill. Pull up a chair, make yourselves comfortable, expect swearing, pour yourself a good old cup of tea, and let's get into this reaction. Okay, chapter title is I Hear Voices. <laughs> is that like a nod towards you's, you know, crazy state of mind right now? Okay, so we start off with Cruel. Always a good start, kicking off with Cruel. Still, the drug isn't working yet. Why are drugs always the answers in this story, supposedly? Like, I really feel like Kagami's trying to push the usefulness of drugs <laughs> upon his readers. Don't do drugs, kids. PSA. You each are hanging there. You, snap out of it, stupid you. And then, yeah, you is, you is screaming and he's looking uh, surprisingly good looking as he does it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all here for the fangs and the crazy. Come on. Damn it, you. This is wrong. This isn't who you are. You aren't like this at all. Do these lines remind you of anything or is it just me wearing the shipping goggles? <laughs> we had uh, Daddy Shikama giving his blessings to little old you, didn't he? Uh, you with his desire to kiss Princess Meek and revive him. Instead, Gurren is like, no, you, this isn't who you are. You must go to angelic conversion therapy. <laughs> yeah, and finally, okay, we get back to Asher versus you. Here we go. Oh, I do not have a good feeling about Asher's fate in this chapter. I don't even want to go on. <laughs> I said it in my reflection video, but like we know that Yu has some very significant plot armor on right now. The plot favors him massively. In order to progress, Yu has to win. Ashura, are you strong enough to penetrate that plot armor? I don't know if you are. Let's see. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, the sword through the eye, the sword through the eye. <laughs> We've got some final destination shit happening in this chapter. I don't want it. Why, Kagami? Why do you fucking do this to me? Oh, but of course, no, you is absolutely fine. Look, he's just like whacked Ashura aside. As you do when you've got a sword through the fucking eye. Ashura can an infinite blades, not of fate. Hi! Wait, don't, I, don't, I didn't need that. <laughs> I did not need that. I said in the last chapter, didn't I, that I thought that we might see Mika being tortured with swords stuck through him as uh, as you forces him to consume his desires. I said that we'd see some Mika torture panels. Turns out it's not Mika that's being tortured, it's you. Happy fucking days. Either way, I was right. I'll take that as a win. <laughs> And yeah, Ashura once again sliced in half. Excellent. But it's fine. He'll get right back up. You just watch. I can't afford to lose. I'm not going to lose here. You aren't getting away. Oh, the crazy. The crazy on his face is so good. You've turned into a monster, you. A monster everyone hates. A monster that doesn't deserve to live. Ashura. Ashura, I love you, but you are a manipulative, evil little bastard sometimes. Because <laughs> he's trying to, like, get you to doubt himself and to remember back to, like, when his parents rejected him and all that shit. Remember that you? Remember what they said? Yeah, before, what everyone else used to call you. My parents called me a devil. Like, yeah, here we go. Here come, here come the fucking flashbacks. I'm sorry, I'm really tired of the same flashbacks. Are we ever going to get, like, flashbacks that, you know, show us something new? More ancient Greece flashbacks would be amazing. I feel like the plot hasn't gone very far. We've had, like, four months now since 114 when you chose Mika. Then 115 was him confirming that he chose Mika. 116... I can't actually remember. 117 was him fighting Ashera. Now we're on 118. Like, it doesn't feel like we've moved very far fucking forward, which is really depressing. A devil's child deserves to die. Yes, killing you is the right thing to do. It's for the best. After that, the only thought that crossed my mind was that life had no value. I'm alone. I'll always be alone. And then Shikama just rocks up for some reason. What? <laughs> does he just rock up there in like Yu's little cage like what what is Shikama how can he just like appear in random fucking places like is this implied that he's like physically present in front of you I don't get it <laughs> I don't get it never mind it doesn't have to make sense it's Seraph of the end don't worry it won't be long now soon you'll meet the one who'll give you meaning ah of course it's baby Mika baby Mika oh 
my trauma is healed. <laughs> my trauma of seeing you being stabbed through the eye is completely healed because I'm gazing upon the perfection of baby Mika. Like, look at that little face. He's so cute. He's so cute. He's like a little ball of sunshine. You certainly think so. Look, like Mikhaila's smiling. Hi. And you's like, oh, <laughs> oh, hello. Those are all fake memories, manipulated emotions. Fake memories, that's a weird phrase like as in the memories themselves were like implanted into you's brain like they never happened or like fake as in shikama manipulated that situation to happen because of his grand plan of bullshit i don't know open your ears listen can't you hear your real family okay so like i can't even get that mad at ashra for this because yeah it's kind of throwing mika under the bus like mika is not your real family like these are all fake memories in fairness ashra is in like a life or death fight we think we think it's life or death we're not entirely sure I would be fucking saying anything <laughs> in that situation to get myself out of it. So I can't be that mad at Ashra for saying these things and for saying, you know, the Shinoa squad is your real family. You come back to your senses. Please don't devour me. <laughs> I can't be that mad about it. On the other hand, what if it's actually like none of it's real? My God, like what if? <laughs> what if literally all of their memories have been manipulated up until like a certain point in their lives and like you and Mika did not meet the way that we think that they met at the orphanage? Like what if that? all was actually fake like when then did they properly meet i don't know <laughs> oh my god this story actually drives you insane like it makes you doubt your own like recollection of the story that's been told up to this point it actually drives you mad you eat your you eat your you please stop you Mitsuba, here's the million dollar question. Is Mitsuba gonna get a line in this chapter that is not Yuichiro's name? Let's see, place your bets, everybody. Yuichiro, listen to me. If you let yourself go completely berserk, you'll never come back. We are your allies. We'll listen to you, whatever you say. We'll do whatever you want us to do. I'm sorry, that pisses me off. <laughs> that pisses me off because for a brief moment, a few chapters ago, they were all, you know, about to turn on each other. And it was really interesting. They were all about to turn on each other for their own desires. And, you know, they were following our Lord and Saviour, Gurren. And it was gonna, you know, result in some proper fucking conflict. Are they now reverting back to following Yu's orders? Like, that's really lame. I wanted some genuine conflict. <laughs> I'm really disappointed. You're gonna offer me drama and then snatch it away? I don't think so. That's really cruel. <laughs> Don't worry, the drug is kicking in. It'll work. Drugs are the answer. The power of his demon is waning and he's coming back to his senses. Keep talking to him. He should be able to hear you. You eat your own. You eat your own, please. I'm sorry. This is my fault. I pressured you. I know how important Mikhailo is to you, but I still pushed you to bring my family back. Okay, Yoichi's face is adorable there. Oh, why must these characters look really cute when they're in distress? I feel like a horrible human. Me too. We should have talked it over. Your family... My family, they're all important. We needed to talk. Oh my God, Mitsuba's got lines. <laughs> Mitsuba's got lines. I mean, they're not very important lines. It's the same stuff we've heard a few times over, but Mitsuba's actually saying something. Yay. I mean, in the end, what do we think, guys? What's the bet in that the F word is going to get dropped on the next page? I haven't scrolled yet. I haven't scrolled. I would bet a million, million, million pounds that the F word is about to be said. In the end, right, <laughs> we're family too. Of course we are. Of course we are, guys. Never mind the fact that we just, you know, pulled our swords on each other and we've got this irreconcilable choice in front of us. Like, it's perfectly fine. We can definitely go back to the way things were. <laughs> on the one hand, like, I can't be that mad at them because I'm thinking, well, Gurren was ordering them in the moment to get their swords out and to turn on you. And maybe they did have some, like, you know, hesitation. But I can understand it maybe from, like, Mitsubo and Shinoa's perspective because they naturally would have had, like, more reservations about going after you because Shinoa doesn't have, like, any family to resurrect. And and Mitsuba's like got her parents but like it's not the same as for example Kimizuki and his sister who's been like his driving force throughout the whole story and the same with Yoichi you know with his dead sister there should be a split there you would think right I just don't like the way that this is being walked back because it had so much promise and potential if they did turn on each other like at least for a substantial period of time you know I would have no problem with them getting back together in the future but it looks like this is like a genuine change of heart that they've had and they're just walking it back I don't know I don't know I'm just disappointed me, my sister, we're all your family, so quit this crap and come back to your senses. Shinoa, you eat your own. Please. Oh, oh. 
please don't go anywhere without me. I just can't. I can't go on living without you. Okay. I'm not a you know a shipper. I used to be actually back in the day when I watched the anime. I did like them together. I've always thought that they looked good as complementary character designs. And I really liked, you know, in the beginning when she had like her sassiness. I loved it. I thought she was a good kind of uh, counter to you. I really liked the way that they played off each other. I'm not a shipper of that anymore. As you guys know, <laughs> you know, you know which ship I'm on now. However, that panel is beautiful. Like, look at the way that that is drawn. Like, the kind of sincerity as she's holding him, like, the emotions in her face. I can't hate that panel. I can't hate that panel at all. I think it's really beautiful, actually. And, uh, yeah, the poor girl. I just want to give her a hug. Like, <laughs> poor Shinoa. Uh, what is going on with... Are they... <laughs> Have they both been cut in half? What is going on in that fucking panel? <laughs> Enough, stop this, you aren't alone anymore. If you can't hear their voices, then you really are just a monster. A puppet Shikama Doji made to dance to his tune. All of them, they're there for me. Right, I'm not alone, not anymore, exactly. Are you back to your senses? It's about time. Yeah, then quit this crap, jeez. Sorry, Ashura, I wore you out. You're telling me. By the way, I've been sane this whole time. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> fucking amazing we've seen it before right we saw him trick shikama doji we saw it back in chapter 70 something we knew he was capable of it but yeah i was i was tricked here i thought he'd fucking lost it <laughs> oh my god okay yes okay i'm sorry I, sh I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be cheering for this should i that's really fucking weird but like to see you like go and bite someone like that is fucking awesome <laughs> yep yeah, please can, can we get this with mika and you now please <laughs> Oh God, what is going on in this panel? I don't think Ashura is having a good time. <laughs> Ashura is not loving life right now. Life, that, that was a bad choice of word. <laughs> oh my God, he's like disappearing. What is going on there? No, cruel, I, I'm sorry. Oh, Ashura, no. <laughs> oh, and he's gone. Yeah, he's actually just disappeared. The plot armor was just too strong <laughs> for Ashura Maru to penetrate, even with his infinite blades. And now use back to his like normal smiley self and the seraph is completely gone and <laughs> that's great. So like, what was he doing? Was he like channeling the seraph to try and suppress Asherah, like to use its power, but he has control over it now? I mean, I suppose he did go through a load of seraph training, didn't he? Like where he was trying to control it. So maybe he's got to a point now where he can control the seraph and still be sane. Boy, winning is kind of empty. That's a nice panel with him like sitting in like the empty inner world and then him saying winning is like meaningless. I like that. I like that visual representation. Also, is it like foreshadowing for how he's going to end up? Because that's fucking depressing. Our boy is back. Best boy's back. Okay, happy days. Oh, uh, <coughs> you, you, you're in trouble with the wife. <laughs> that's the look I give to my partner whenever he fucks up. Did you eat? <laughs> Possibly just like straight up murdered Ashra, and that's the first question out of his mouth. <laughs> ah, you look pissed. Yes, he does, you. Well observed. Are you mad at me? Yes, I'm mad. I've been mad the whole time. Didn't you hear? Yep, I did. <laughs> I heard, and I don't give a fuck. You are not dying, Mikaela. I'm so gonna kick your butt. So you're going to betray everyone and bring me back to life, even though that's not what I want? I don't know what to make of this exchange. This is a weird exchange. Mika doesn't seem that angry here. Like, that panel in the top left is, like, him just kind of, you know, saying, oh, it's you being a dumb ass again and not listening to me. It's a good sign in a way because it means that hopefully they're not going to, like, turn on each other and become proper enemies, which is something I was really scared of. On the other hand, it feels a bit underwhelming. The whole thing in 115 was him spilling his guts and saying that he doesn't want you to become a monster. He doesn't want you to sacrifice humanity for him. He wants to, you know, just be allowed to rest, basically. And we saw how meaningful it was in 115, but this this reaction doesn't feel right. Like, the tone of this feels too light. Unless the reason why Mika's reaction is kind of muted here and he's not, like, you know, completely furious or breaking down is because he has realised that he's got this competing desire to live as well as the desire to die. And that's why his protests here are kind of half-hearted. But in which case, like, show us that he's had that revelation show us that that's something that he genuinely feels now. It's like, okay, you has made me see sense. Like, I do deserve to fight for myself and I have the right to live. Something about this doesn't feel right tonally. I don't know what it is. You're going to blindly trundle along with everything Shikama Doji tells you. Nope. <laughs> you, yes. I'm going to do my own thing. Yes, you. Yes, you. Not what Gurren says. 
not what Shikama Dodi says. I'm going to do what I say. Again, I have a problem with this as well. I don't know what, <laughs> what's wrong with me during this reaction. I don't know what's wrong with me. I have a problem with this because you is saying that he's going to do all of this according to what he wants. Again, he's ignoring Mika, right? Surely it should be what they want. And then Mika says, do you have a path you wish to take then? What are you thinking? I don't know. This comes across really one-sided when it shouldn't be. I don't know. I don't like this. Sorry, guys. I, I thought I would be more on board with this whole interaction, but I'm not. I don't know why. I do. I only want one thing, and that's to protect my family from this craptacular world. <laughs> you just using stupid fucking words as usual. <laughs> craptacular world. I will not be adding that one to my vocabulary. Help me with it, okay? Again, like pushing Mika into the role of helper and not like equal, not partner. I Yeah, this bothers me. I'm sorry. This really bothers me. But yeah, then Mika agrees, but it's like reluctant. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this. Don't like this at all. And then you wakes up and oh, Shino is like looking at him. Oh, she, I'm sorry. Like Shino is so cute. Look at her face. She's so cute. I'm sorry, Shino. Okay. So that's like an expression of realization on Shino's face. How much did you hear during the whole debacle? Did he hear Shinoa saying that she couldn't live without him? And is he saying, sorry, I can't be what you want? That's probably a reach, I know. But that panel is really kind of emphasised. It does look like in her eyes, like she's realised something in that panel. And oh, look, and then there she starts to cry before anything's happened. No, no, don't. Don't you dare say it. I'm leaving. Oh, oh, Shinoa. Oh, I feel so bad for her, like... Girl, we've all been there. We've all been there. We've all been there where, you know, you want someone and they're just not that into you. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. I want her to be happy. And yeah, then that's it. He's gone. Boy's gone. He's escaped. Woohoo. You don't. You eat your own. Oh my God. So he's like gone literally 15 floors up. Well, there's me thinking he's going to have some trouble fucking escaping. He's just like, no, I'm just going to, I'm just going to one punch man through this. <laughs> oh my God. So... I think then that we must be on the verge of the father-son reunion because I think that he's probably going to go now and meet up with uh, with Daddy Shikama and hopefully get some answers. It'd be great if we did. <laughs> It'd be great if we could go and get some answers. But yeah, just, just mixed feelings about this chapter. I'm pleased that you won. I'm pleased that he's escaped. I'm pleased that he's following his own path. I'm kind of pleased that Mika and you are not enemies, but I'm really disappointed in the way that it looks like Mika has again like acquiesced so easily to what you wants to do and it's still very much you in the driving seat and saying I want to do this I'm not going to listen to what Mika wants I'm not even going to like point out that I'm doing this for me and him I mean probably Mika does know that because he's connected to you as his demon but like the whole point of being in the demon mind space is to verbalize to the audience what the characters are feeling implicitly, right? Like they should be having that conversation and you should be saying, right, Mika, this is the only thing I care about. I'm going to protect our family. I'm going to protect you and stop you from dying because even though you might kind of want to die on some level, you know full well that being happy and being alive and being with me is what you want more. That's why I'm fighting and we're going to find a way out of this together. It still felt very much one-sided in this chapter. I didn't like that. I also didn't like how the squad suddenly kind of buckled because you was in danger of going berserk. Like, what did they think was going to happen when they pulled their weapons on him? I didn't like that at all. Like, the squad should be fighting for themselves. And I don't know. I don't know. And of course, we lost Asherah. Because it's not like we need sane voices in this story or anything. It's not like we want smart characters who can think for themselves. <laughs> I'm really fucking pissed off that we've lost Asherah. I saw it coming, but I'm not happy. I understand why it was necessary to get rid of Asherah here, because if you're going to show you going into possibly like a spiral, becoming a monster, you know, like this darker path, he's got to kill off someone who has weight in the story, right? So yeah, like you would have to kill off someone like at the level of Asherah for it to bother us and for us to go, oh shit, like you's actually really serious about his chosen path, you know? So I can understand why it was Asherah's time to go. That doesn't make me happy about it. <laughs> it does not make me happy about it. And I'm also in two minds whether I want him to come back or not, because if he comes back like, you know, a Disney death and he gets magically revived by Yu's plan, in a way, excellent, because yeah, bring Asherah back, please, like make the Tepesh siblings happy. On the other hand, it's like, then it takes away the emotional impact, right? Like, you didn't actually grow at all because he killed off Asherah, perhaps knowing that he could come back. So 
I do not know what I want. I don't know what I want. Don't know what to feel about the story. <laughs> As usual, it's, it's just a beautiful mess. It's a beautiful mess. Okay, so that's the end of my reaction. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give me a like, comment and subscribe. You can also connect with me on social media. I will pop the links in the description below. And with that, guys, you take care of yourselves. I will see you in the next one. Bye-zy-bye.